For those of you that are into health and wellness and diet in particular, you may have noticed the trend over the last few years. It went from paleo to keto to carnivore. All of these are progressively lessening carbohydrates. That being said, I've shared my mindset on why I think this is so popular, namely because our microbiomes are just totally screwed. Our inner gut bacteria, our ability to deal with the toxins or plant compounds that come in our day-to-day -day food. That being said, also, potentially, genetically, we are more predisposed to appreciate fat and protein as well as the fact that these foods are more condensed in nutrition, probably helping individuals overcome certain deficiencies. All of this being said, right now I'm enjoying the game of formulating what they call an elemental diet, mimicking what you could call the carnivore diet, on a moderate amount of protein. You might call it the almond diet, because I'm also fasting, fasting 22 to 23 hours a day, consuming 18 to 2,000 calories, doing it ketogenically. Now the question for me becomes, if a majority of your energy is fat, what is the most ideal fat source? Now I've been thinking about and practicing this for some time, so I've already had the pleasure of acquiring an oil press because the fat that I want to get into is more easily oxidizable, meaning that it can go rancid relatively easily in comparison to saturated fat. You can leave your coconut butter on the shelf for quite some time. If you were to do the same with flax or sachi inchi, they may not last as long. That being said, I acquired said oil press some months ago and lived on pretty much a zero carb diet for a good month and a half. I found after a period of time that my training was exhausting my glycogen reserves faster than I would like them to so that I was not recovering or able to get into my explosive high intensity training to the degree that I'd like to. About that time I started to add dextrose into my elemental diet and that improved my performance significantly. Dextrose is pure glucose, glucose preferentially directed to muscle glycogen as opposed to the liver glycogen, theoretically assuring me to go back into ketosis more rapidly while regenerating my glycogen stores of my muscles more rapidly. So I understand what I'm doing is not something everybody can do because I am sourcing my own oils. Before I was doing this, I was buying flax oil and hemp seed oil because the type of fatty acid I am most interested in after my research is alpha linoleic acid. It is the omega-3 that we know as our essential, I mean, essential fatty acid. There's linoleic acid and alpha linoleic acid. These are the only two fatty acids that we understand that we need and we cannot produce. Between these two, this omega-3 alpha linoleic acid seems to be quite fascinating because it acts in the body differently than most other fatty acids. It's very easy due to its structure to break down and turn into ketones. I found a fascinating study multiple studies actually, I'll link in the description, showing the value of this fatty acid. In one study in particular, they compared it to other forms of fatty acids, monosaturated, um, omega-6 linoleic acid, saturated fatty acids, and measured the glucose, I mean the ketogenic response alpha linoleic acid produced more than twice as many ketones per gram of fat. It also increased insulin sensitivity and lowered 
glucose, when saturated fat, at least the one they were using in the study, lessened insulin sensitivity and raised, uh, I guess you could say, hurt glucose tolerance. I believe there's a rise in glucose. This fatty acid has also been demonstrated to be anti-inflammatory. It's also been demonstrated to help heal the digestive tract. The epithelial cells in the intestines can help people recover from Crohn's disease and IBS, alpha linoleic acid. So, back on the ketones, I experienced this to be true myself because I started to press chia seeds and flax seeds as my main source of oil. And after a few weeks on this, my ketone levels got absurdly high higher than I actually want them to be. Uh, eight millimolars, nine millimolars. One time I couldn't measure on my Keto Mojo. It went over 10. So that is higher than I want it to be. I preferentially feel the best around between two and four millimolars. But it's interesting to note that these ketones have amazing side effect of stimulating all sorts of beneficial metabolic responses. Autophagy being one of the main ones. That's catabolism where we are dissolving and breaking down denatured proteins and cells to use them as fuel. This is how we regenerate. This is how we clear our brains of plaque, our arteries of plaque and digest scar tissue. This is how we regenerate. We bifurcate between catabolism and anabolism, autophagy, breaking things down, and then mTOR, building things up. Also interesting was that ALA, compared to other fatty acids, enhanced the accretion of muscle mass and the maintenance of lean body tissue in elderly. So it seems that this fatty acid may also help in stabilizing, helping you to maintain the muscle mass you have, and also potentially gaining mass. Perhaps because of its anti-inflammatory effects, I don't know. Either way, it's quite fascinating. Um, that oil I was showing in the picture, this is called Sacha Inchi Oil. I started growing these things because I love them so much. It's definitely an expensive seed, not the cheapest one to make oil out of. Um, but it has an amazing balance between linoleic and alpha linoleic, the two essential fatty acids. Something else I've found in my research is that the ratio of these is what's most important when it comes to your level of conversion to DHA, um, the anti-inflammatory effects, how it affects the cellular membrane, the composition of your cellular membrane, which affects the fluidity and your signaling molecules, a lot of complex stuff I only understand the outside of. That being said, after reviewing as many studies as I could find comparing different ratios of these fatty acids, I'm most interested in a 1.5 ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. This is 3 grams of alpha linoleic acid to 2 grams of linoleic acid. So, for me, having the oil press to use, that means I'm doing a lot of chia and flax, two of the highest. Sachi inchi when I have it, and hemp seeds. I'm basically just shooting to see what the most ALA I can get is. And considering that 70 to 80% of my calories are coming from fat, that's something like 12 to 14 tablespoons worth of oil. I mix that with sunflower lecithin. Let me be a little more clear for those of you who don't understand. An elemental diet is basically an elixir, a smoothie, a drinkable beverage. They can actually do infusions that, not of this particular. Uh, a drinkable beverage that is most easily absorbed. P 
people use them whenever they have compromised digestive tracts or who are doing elimination diets. Say you have SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is an elimination diet. That's one of the main reasons I think that the carnivore diet works so good because it's an elimination diet. Zero carbohydrates. Um, and so I'm taking plant proteins, peptides, and free form amino acids and mixing them with plant sourced fats, namely ALA, then linoleic acid, monosaturates, and saturated fatty acids from seeds that I press. I also add on top of this sunflower lecithin. Lecithin is composed largely of phosphacetylcholine. Choline and phospholipids help compose the membrane of cells, the outside of a cell. And these have a great deal of influence on the fluidity and exchange of energy, information, and the signaling molecules and the health of that cell. This also known as lecithin, I believe I said that sunflower lecithin is also an emulsifier, so when I throw it into the blender with the protein, with the fat, it just makes this fat delicious, creamy smoothie, sweeten up some stevia, throw other beneficial things in there, cacao powder, maybe some greens powder, multivitamin mineral, bada bing bada boom. You've got your complete nutrition. Ideally what I'm trying to do is create a very simple way to get all of your nutrition if you want to go keto, you can. If you choose to go high carb, you can. But we're going to simplify that. I'm right now, just enjoying the experiment. Just after about a week of doing this, really appreciating being back on the low carb. I went ketogenic before I fell off last time. I was definitely peaking in health, feeling really good. Fell off because of a mineral deficiency, potassium. So. That's a whole nother story, which I've already shared on, but I will share more on in the near future. Wanted to drop in and share that thought, and I'd love to hear what you guys imagine or propose would be the best fatty acid that you could consume looking at this high-fat dietary trend. What's the ideal fat? What's the ideal source of that fat? Please uh, pitch in, share some ideas, and let's keep it rolling. If you guys appreciate this, please subscribe, please share, please like uh, for more content. Go check out my videos on, the, on my page. I also have an Instagram I share a lot on, spencer.mac, and I'll keep the content coming. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon. Peace.